Hi, this is Maginoni, and here's another chapter of Marvel history. Today we're going to talk about Nova the Human Rocket. Now, Nova first appeared in his own series in 1976, created by uh, Marv uh, Wolfman. Now, originally this character was intended to be like a homage to Stanley and Steve Ditko's Spider-Man character, where you have like this teenager, he's this regular ordinary guy, and he gets extraordinary powers. Now, his origin, though, is very, very similar to Green Lantern, in that you have this alien from space, he's about to die, and he picks somebody who he feels is worthy to gain his power before his death. And in this case, it was a young kid named Richard Ryder. Now, after gaining these powers, he was thrown out into the world to fight crime. Now, the problem is, this thing didn't come with instruction manual. So, with his suit, he could only do very limited things. He had strength, he was bulletproof, he could fly at a very high rate of speed, and his helmet actually allowed him various abilities, such as, like, it could get um, the radio waves from the police scanners. And later on, what we learn is, it was actually also a communication device and it could allow him access to the uh, computer system that was um, put on planet Xander. Now I'll go into more detail with that part later. Now Nova's then also given his own rogues gallery. Uh, some of the more notable characters were uh, Powerhouse, Condor, um, Diamond Head, and the Sphinx. Now the Sphinx is more important out of that group because this character came back later on and he actually was a little bit more involved in the Marvel Universe. Uh, the Sphinx was basically a wizard back in the time of the pharaohs in Egypt and he gained the power of immortality, he gets banished and you know through time he basically gets bored of immortality and just wants to die. So what he's doing is he's looking for a way to kill himself and when he comes across Nova he senses that Nova has the answer the problem is Nova doesn't know how to give him that information and that leads on a series of events and that eventually involved the Fantastic Four and Galactus. Now what the early stories never really touched too much on was Nova was part of a special elite group called the Nova Corps and basically they were a intergalactic police force from the planet Xander. So in a way this kind of was very similar to uh, Green Lantern again, in that you had multiple people, uh, inter you know, from different worlds, and they all had a very similar costume, and they would basically police the universe. Even though Nova's run was pretty short, at 25 episodes, Marvel did bring him back a couple more times for two other short-lived series, and then he also appeared in a team book called The New Warriors. Uh, the best way to look at the New Warriors is this. Imagine a bunch of young superheroes who really are in a very bad situation, you know, in that they're untrained, they have no clue what they're doing, they're in way over their head, and they get this idea to fight crime, and, you know, it ended very tragically. Now, at the end of the New Warriors run, what happened was they decided to become a reality TV show and then they would go after supervillains and put it on TV. Well, the problem was because they're inexperienced, they really didn't know what they were doing and they accidentally caused a huge explosion and killed a lot of people. At the end of that time period, we don't see Nova any longer on, or very we don't see him often on planet Earth. He goes off into space. Now, once Nova goes off into space, this is when his character begins to shine. Because while he was down on Earth, he was really like a two-bit superhero in that he never really got a lot of love, and he never really actually did much of anything. But when he went off into space, he was a part of this huge intergalactic conflict called like the Annihilation Wave. Now, from the Annihilation, we had uh, Annihilation Conquest, the Realm of Kings, and eventually it leads to the Thanos Imperative, where Nova and the Guardians of the Galaxy fight 
against Thanos. While Nova was in space, this is where he actually grew, in that back on Earth he was just your standard teenage young adult type superhero, but once he was involved in this intergalactic conflict, he basically became a man overnight, and he had to make extremely difficult decisions and basically lead the heroes against the forces of evil. And when I mean evil, I mean like extinction level evil. So he really had to elevate who he was as a character. And this is where, like I said before, he actually became a much stronger character and he became a much more interesting character, which leads to like why I can't believe they eventually killed him off at the end of the Thanos Imperative because uh, for me you took a like a C level character and you elevated him to an almost A level status and ended the story right there. Now while he was in space he did make a very short appearance in the Secret Avengers and he also was able to be, uh, redo the Nova Corps. During uh, one of the extinction events um, all of the Nova Corps were eliminated and the power of everybody went inside him. So he was the last one left. He had all of the knowledge inside his helmet and his helmet and Richard Ryder would you know communicate often and um, he basically was I got the one cop in the middle of LA in that he had to go from one distress to signal to another one and it was causing him much grief. Between one of the extinction events Nova goes back down to Earth and uh, he goes to Project Pegasus and his brother happens to be working there. Now during this time happened to be the secret invasion storyline in Marvel where the scrolls were invading and he helps his brother along with Dark Hawk and then they are able to fight back against the Skrulls. After that he takes his brother off into space and his brother uh, becomes a Nova Corps member even though he doesn't really want him to be. Now the Nova Corps actually goes through a lot of uh, ups and downs along the way. Members get slaughtered and they get reformed a couple other times in between. Now eventually his space stories lead to the Thanos Imperative where at the end of that storyline uh, to keep Thanos in an alternate universe, he sacrifices his life along with Starhawk to keep Thanos back while the portal closes. And eventually, um, he's never seen again. Now, he's given like a hero's funeral at the very end of that storyline, but again, this was a, a situation where they've elevated a character from nothing and they've elevated him to. Um, a hero status. Now, for the longest time, we didn't see Nova again until finally we have a brand new Nova by the name of Sam Alexander. Now, Sam's first appearance was in in a Marvel point uh, one issue, but the first his first real impact was in the Avengers versus X Men storyline, where he's involved in a space conflict and he comes rocketing to the Earth. Uh, with the warning that the Phoenix arrives. Now he doesn't really do much in the actual series itself but he does make another appearance at, at the end of the series at a crucial moment to help save everybody. Now the new series is going to be starting soon or depending upon when you see this it probably have, has already started so a lot of the mystery of who Sam is and the differences between uh, the helmet colors will come out more. So this is definitely something to watch. It looks like they're going to be building onto his lore. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more crossovers with this new Nova with the Guardians of the Galaxy. I hope this gives you a basic understanding of who Nova was. Uh, this was a very high-level overview, so if you want to know more about his adventures, there is a collected version of like an, in one of the Essential books so that way you can get a whole bunch of issues really cheap. And um, one way to just look at his entire career was he was a character that never really got any type of respect until the very end of his run. And with the coming of Sam, 
I have a feeling um, it's only going to be a matter of time before people forget who uh, Rich Rider was and the original Nova and the uh, legacy that was before him. Because going forward, uh, while well, they're probably going to bring back some of the old characters, like I've noticed uh, Diamond Head makes another appearance. Uh, for the most part, I can't imagine them bringing back the entire rogues gallery, considering how uh, Nova's pretty much now associated with the space adventures. But only time will tell, and we'll see what happens. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, let me know. I rate the video up or down, let me know what you think. Uh, if you'd like to see other videos with uh, Marvel history and... Uh, who certain characters are, let me know. And I mean, I have a list now that I'm going to be working through, but if somebody has a suggestion that I think is really good, that um, I can easily put that at the top of the list. So um, I'm always looking for suggestions. And uh, like the Facebook link, I give out comic books. And I also do Crunchyroll videos. There's a link down below for that too. And. Um, I'll have more re videos and reviews and histories and stuff like that. So, until next time.